Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn the new subtopic 4.4 Intermolecular Forces. In the first three subtopics in chapter 4, we have learned atoms within a molecule can form ionic and covalent bond. But molecules also participate in interactions with other molecules. To see interactions between molecules, we need to learn about intermolecular forces. So these are the attractive forces between molecules in general, and it only exists when the molecules are sufficiently close to each other. Means we need to make sure that they are close enough, then only this forces is present. So there are three different types of intermolecular forces that you need to know. From these three types, we could divide them into two. First, known as weak van der Waal forces. So this weak van der Waal forces consists of dipole-dipole forces, which are forces present between polar molecules. And the other one is dispersion forces, also known as London forces, a type of force that present between non-polar molecules. So these two are weak forces as compared to the other one. The other type of force is called hydrogen bond. So this hydrogen bond are forces present between selective polar molecules. So we're going to look at what kind of selective polar molecules are we going to use for this hydrogen bond, which indicates the strongest intermolecular forces out of these three. Attractive forces between polar molecules here will take place between positive pole of one molecule with negative pole of another molecule. As with hydrogen chloride, molecule with partially positive hydrogen and partially negative chlorine will move in such a way so as to always be making electrostatic interactions between negative end of one dipole and positive end of another dipole. So dipole-dipole forces present when dipoles interact with each other. When comparing strength of dipole-dipole forces, we usually look for polar molecule with similar molecular size. So if any of the molecule is found to be more polar, indicates dipole-dipole forces is stronger than the one who is less polar. Therefore, more energy needed to overcome the forces between the molecules. Dispersion forces, or another name London forces, is attractive forces present between non-polar molecule. So why the name is dispersion forces? This is due to the motions of electrons that takes place in a molecule or atom. To understand this better, let's look at the illustrations below. So initially, we have non-polar molecules of A and B located next to each other. Make sure they are close enough. Then, the electrons inside the molecule are distributed uniformly around the nucleus. Let's say chlorine got 7 electrons each means the 14 electrons will disperse throughout the molecule. Due to electron nature that is so small and free to move around, there may be more electrons on one side of the nucleus than the other one at any instance. So this phenomenon is only temporary, but it will create a new dipole called instantaneous dipole. So this instantaneous dipole on atom A is caused by uneven distributions of electrons in here. You could see you have more electrons on the left than the one on the right. The instantaneous dipole on atom A will induce the neighboring atom when they are very close, causing electrons on molecule B to also disperse in uneven manners, forming a species called induced dipole. Lastly, Attractions formed between the instantaneous dipole and induced dipole is called dispersion forces or London forces. Strength of London forces is influenced by two different factors. First is polarizability. So this polarizability referring to the proportions of electric dipole moment to be acquired when subjected to an electric field. So we usually just look at the molecular size to know how are they going to polarize. So bigger molecule with greater number of electrons will have higher polarizability, resulting stronger London forces. Second factor is molecular shapes. Molecular shape is a bit different from the size of molecule. So this factor will be considered when you have molecule with the same molecular mass. In other words, same size. So from the shape, whether they are straight chain or has branch will lead to the size of surface area. So bigger surface area contributed by straight chain molecule will increase the contact with the neighboring molecules 
Hence, London forces become stronger. To conclude, when determining the strength of Van der Waal forces, you should start from molecular polarity. Knowing they are polar or non-polar, then only look at their sizes if they have different molecular mass. If they have exactly the same size, then proceed to the shape. Look if there's a branch of atoms present or not. We're going to look at how strength of London forces will affect the boiling points of molecules by using the two factors we just learned. So for the first one, in terms of polarizability, as in the size of molecule, given non-polar molecules of methane, ethane, propane, and butane, they are all straight-chained and has symmetrical shape consists of only carbons and hydrogens. So we could see from the data given, methane with only one carbon has negative 161.5 degrees Celsius as the boiling point, which is the lowest, as compared to butane with negative 0.5 degrees Celsius, which is the highest boiling point among all four molecules. So we could say that this butane has the biggest molecular mass, comes from the four carbon in here. It tells us that the size is big, means bigger size got higher polarizability, resulting stronger London forces, which will require more energy to overcome the forces between the molecules. Next, in terms of molecular shapes, both butane and 2-methylpropane are non-polar molecules because they have exactly the same molecular size since they have four carbon in total, comes from the gray ball, and the white ball represents the 10 hydrogens. So butane with straight chain has a higher boiling point than 2-methylpropane that got branched on the carbon number 2, which is methyl, on its parent chain of propane, consists of three carbons. So the presence of branch on 2-methylpropane will result in smaller surface area than in the butane. So we could say butane got larger surface area. So increasing the surface area means more London forces can be formed. Hence, the strength of London forces increases, resulting higher boiling point, as you can see from the butane in here, negative 0.5 degrees Celsius. So this increase in boiling point will require more energy to break the forces between them. We know between these two types of Van der Waal forces, dipole-dipole forces present in polar molecule has greater strength than the London forces in non-polar molecules. But there's a situation where the London forces could also overshadow the dipole-dipole forces. So these exceptions apply when the size of non-polar molecules is much bigger than the polar molecules, about 10 times bigger. As you can see from the example, CCL4 is a non-polar molecule, got 154 gram per mole, in contrast to CHF3, which is a polar molecule due to uh, dipoles cannot cancel out each other, got only 70 gram per mole. So the London forces will then be stronger than the dipole-dipole forces due to the size of molecules in here. Moving on to the third type of intermolecular forces, which is the strongest one, called hydrogen bond. So this hydrogen bond is a type of force present between selective polar molecules. When we say selective here, even though the interactions in hydrogen bond is similar to dipole-dipole, but they need to obey these two essential requirements to be qualified for such title of strong hydrogen bonds. As for the first requirement, the dipole should be generated by nitrogen hydrogen, oxygen hydrogen, or fluorine hydrogens. In other words, on the first molecules, hydrogen should attach to one of these highly electronegative atoms, nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. As for the neighboring molecules involved, lone pair must be present on either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. The neighboring molecules can be either the same molecules or different molecules. So we're going to look at the example after this. But for a very quick summary to apply these requirements, when the first molecule, let's say we have water, we have water, hydrogen attached to oxygen, and the second molecule, ammonia, they got lone pair on the nitrogen, means they are going to form interactions in between this hydrogen and lone pair called hydrogen bond. So these interactions is especially strong due to the electronegative 
atom of oxygen in here and nitrogen in here. You need to know how hydrogen bonds are formed between the same molecules and different molecules to help you explain the physical properties we're going to learn throughout the chemistry course for both semester 1 and semester 2. When discussing about boiling points, we're going to look at the forces present between the same molecules. So we're going to look at this example involving ammonia molecules. In the first molecules, let's say on the far left in here, we're going to check if there is hydrogen attached to the nitrogen. Yep, we have one. And then look at the neighboring molecule in here, whether they got lone pair on nitrogens or not. Yes, we have one in here. Make sure they are close enough to each other so then we can get a hydrogen bond in here. Even though we have formed one hydrogen bond, Ammonia still got hydrogen attached to nitrogens available, means they can form more hydrogen bonds. So by having another molecule of ammonia, then we have lone pair on it. So we're going to form another hydrogen bonds with the other molecules, forming hydrogen bond for both. Having more hydrogen bond will lead to higher boiling point. While forces formed between different molecules is used to explain solubility of a molecule in polar solvent, which in this example, we're going to use methanol solubility in water molecule. So methanol has hydrogen attached to oxygen, so they obey the first requirement. Then the neighboring molecule, which is water, has a lone pair on it. So hydrogen bond is formed, means methanol is soluble in water. In conclusions, when determining the strength of hydrogen bond, you should first look at the highest priority which is the electronegativity of atoms that hydrogen should bond it to in the first molecule. It can be either nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine. Once you have known the electronegativity of atoms, then only number of hydrogen bond form can be determined. We're going to look at effect on hydrogen bonding on three physical properties in total. The first one is bonding points. When we say boiling point, you need to understand the rise in temperature is resulted from the forces present between the same molecules. So the boiling point we're going to look at involve hydrides from group 15 to 17, which involve nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. From the boiling point trend, we could say the ammonia has lower boiling point than hydrogen fluoride than water molecules. So these molecules all have comparable molecular weight of 17, 20, and 18 gram per mole. Not much difference, about 3 to 2. But then, strictly to remind you, from the previous slide, we know the strength of hydrogen bond is not determined from the size, but from the electronegativity and also the number of hydrogen bond to be formed. Across period 2, electronegativity increases from nitrogen to oxygen to fluorine. So the electronegativity suggests hydrogen fluoride should have greater boiling point than the water. But in reality, water has higher boiling point than the hydrogen fluoride. So why is this happening? Since the electronegativity factor is disobeyed, there must be something to do with the number of hydrogen bond. From the boiling point trend, we could say water molecule can form more hydrogen bond than hydrogen fluoride. That's why it has higher boiling point. We're going to look at what makes water has higher boiling point than hydrogen fluoride. Fluorine in hydrogen fluoride, even though its electronegativity is higher, but the boiling point is lower due to its capacity to form only one hydrogen bond with the partial positive hydrogen of the neighboring molecule. While for water, each water can form two hydrogen bonds per molecule. So the reason is that the water has two partially positive hydrogen atoms and two lone pairs on the oxygen atoms. Hence, water has strong hydrogen bonding than hydrogen fluoride, which leads to its high boiling point. As for nitrogens in ammonia molecules, we know the hydrogen bonding is much weaker than hydrogen fluoride due to the nitrogen, which is less electronegative. That's why the ammonia has lower boiling point. Solubility of molecule can be determined by using two types of solvent in polar or non-polar. 
but the polar molecules tend to dissolve in polar solvent and the polar solvent that we're going to use is water but then not all polar molecules is soluble in water only the one that can form hydrogen bond with water will soluble so we are going to look at the hydrogen bond formed between the polar molecule that contain hydrogen attached to either F, O or N with water molecule that has lone pair on the oxygen atom or vice versa. To have a better view for the effect on solubility, we're going to look at a few examples. First, we have ethanol dissolved in water. So here we have ethanol consists of two carbons and OH attached to it represent the alcohol. So this ethanol with hydrogen attached to oxygen can form hydrogen bond with the lone pair on the oxygen in water molecule. While water got hydrogen attached to this oxygen can also form hydrogen bond with the lone pair on oxygen in the ethanol. So this indicates ethanol is soluble in water and has higher solubility because these hydrogen bonds can be formed either way, from methanol to water or water to ethanol. For the next example, we have ethanol dissolved in water molecule. So this is ethanol with two carbons and then we have double bond O in here. So ethanol can form hydrogen bond through the oxygen atom to the hydrogens attached to the oxygen on water molecules. However, because ethanol in here got no hydrogen attached directly to this oxygen means they cannot form hydrogen bond with the lone pair on the oxygen on water. Therefore, ethanol is still soluble in water but they are slightly soluble means the solubility rate is lower than that of ethanol. Density is all about the degree of compactness of a substance which in most cases we know solid should be denser than the liquid. But for water molecule, we have different cases where the solid ice has lower density than the liquid water. This is due to the open hexagonal shaped crystal structure in ice. So how is this open hexagonal structure is formed? So by formations of hydrogen bonds between the water molecules. So in here we have water molecules to form hydrogen bond between them and then by having more water molecules means you are going to form more hydrogen bonds so the hydrogen bond will increase as you increase the number of water molecules so it can be concluded when liquid water freezes their volume increases due to the number of water molecules involved but then the density decreases because of this open hexagonal structure that's why the solid ice will float in water. That's all you need to know for subtopic 4.4 intermolecular forces. Thank you.